Hello again. Today we're talking about replacing the rear drive shaft. This item transfers torque between the transfer case and the rear diff. It consists of a front CV joint, a rear universal joint, and a support bearing to decrease drive shaft vibrations. There's also a collapsible crash section that's designed to crumple in during a crash to protect the drivetrain. In Range Rover Sports and LR3s, the biggest issue with these shafts is that the center support bearing tends to wear out. The result is you might hear some dull thumping beneath the shifter knob while you're driving that corresponds with the wheel speed. But the noise may eventually stop completely once the bearing rubber tears all the way. Additionally, the CV joint boot may rupture causing a leak of its grease, and you can notice a corresponding spray pattern when you look under the vehicle. If this happens, you may be able to drive on it for a few more weeks, but ultimately the rear drive shaft should be replaced to prevent further damage. The drive shaft I will use is a GKN drive shaft fitted to the L320. Here are the tools that you'll need for the job. The biggest headache saver for this job is going to be long 3 8 extensions. This way you can remove the high torque diff bolts with adequate room. You can probably get away with using a 24 inch and an 8 inch extension and mix and match them as you need. You also need an E12 and E14 torque sockets. I didn't have these so I had to order them. In theory you can use 12 point sockets but given the high torque I would just recommend buying the sockets, they're pretty cheap. Additionally you will need a 10 millimeter and 13 millimeter socket. Don't forget a half inch to 3 8 converter if you need it. Usually long wrenches are in half inch not 3 8 You'll need a breaker bar for the tough E14 bolts. I just used a half inch torque wrench and put it on 150 foot pounds. You'll also need a blue thread locker. Torque specs will be on the screen when used and in the description. All right, now let's get started. Okay, so first off, lift the vehicle so you can work under it. I'm gonna use Rhino ramps and I'm gonna put them under the back wheels. Placing the vehicle in park is ideal to hold the rear wheels even when the drive shaft is totally removed. Next, disconnect the battery. Uh, you don't want the air suspension acting up during this. Make sure you have all your tools together and get under the car. The first step is going to be to remove the heat shield. There are two bolts and two kind of like nut washers. Both are 10 millimeter. Once removed, you can place it aside. The front CV joint requires the E12 socket to break loose. These bolts are at medium torque and aren't too difficult to remove. None of the bolts should really require an extension, but see what happens. The rear universal joint gave me the most difficulty. These bolts are supposed to be torqued to 110 foot-pounds and they use thread locked bolts. I tried briefly to get them off uh, but I wasn't having any luck so I applied some rust penetrant spray to the front and the back of the bolts and then waited 15 minutes and tried again. What made it work is using the extension, I think it was the uh, 24 inch extension to get to a spot where you have more room and then I use the breaker bar to finally break the bolts loose. This especially is true for the top bolts that are even harder to get to. Once these are all loose and removed you can move on to the center support bearing. To remove this you will need a 13 millimeter socket and one of the extensions will be helpful here. These are low torque and easy to remove. I would recommend removing the middle support bearing last so that the drive shaft doesn't fall on your head while you're working. You should be able to remove the drive shaft at this point by bending it in the middle and this will give room for the front and rear connection points to kind of peel away. 
they probably have become stuck over time. My rear portion became was a little bit stuck, but I could just pry it apart. Next, retrieve the new drive shaft and repeat the process, but in reverse. The rear bolts should have a bit of blue thread locker used on them. Here I'm again fastening the middle bracket first, just one bolt. This way it kind of holds everything together while I'm trying to put in the uh, thread lock bolts. Once things are kind of held together, you can put the uh, thread locked bolt into one of the spots and torque it to 110 foot pounds. The front bolts do not need blue thread locker and neither do any of the other bolts, but uh, these will need their collars, so don't forget those. These will be tightened to 54 foot pounds. Finally, the middle support bearing needs to be tightened, and these can be tightened to 22 foot pounds. Once all of the bolts are fastened, you may replace the heat shield with the 10 millimeter socket. And don't forget to reconnect the battery when you're all done. Take it out of park and you're good to go. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I make Range Rover Sport and LR3 repair videos as issues pop up here or there. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any simple fixes that could save you thousands over taking it to a dealer. Thank you and have a good one.